last term, I was in the dining hall near the panini press. I was like making a sandwich. And this girl was like right next to me. And she like, you know how would someone go to like walk behind you, but in the process, like end up bumping you? So that happened. So like she went to like walk around me, but instead of just saying excuse me, she ended up bumping me and said sorry. And I said, okay, next time before you start walking, just say excuse me. So she walks away after I said that. And she comes back and she says, well, you know, in America, we sometimes say sorry instead of excuse me. So immediately I was like, oh, this girl thinks I'm not, I can't be American because of my skin tone. Um, but which I am American and I hate it. But um, I don't know. I just feel like not only is there like little like microaggressions that's like continuously happening between like students, between faculty, between staff. Um, there's also like bigger things. And I think the bigger things are what allow me to not really feed too much into the microaggressions that happen. Um, but the fact that there are continuous microaggressions still happening on a campus as small as Bennington is a problem. Um, and, and I think it's an account of like people, some of us, like the students of color just being tired and not really wanting to deal with it. And then also too of like, the non-students of color not willing to be like uncomfortable when they're confronted and they try and make themselves the victim and when especially when they're not um also i think there's a lack of inclusion in the classroom um especially when it comes to, like if you're in a seminar style classroom and it comes to like storytelling or things like that it's like yeah I can share my experience of what it means to be a black person and not have anyone comment on that or I guess other students in the classroom being um, afraid to comment but if another white student was to share a story everyone all the other white students would want to com comment on that story and I think that does not that's not a healthy learning environment because if you're not asking more questions about my story, if you're not asking more about my experience and my story, if you're not asking about my feelings um, when I tell my story, then you're not actually learning my story. You're just hearing it and it's like going in one ear and out the other. When I was a freshman, I was in a class. We were um, talking about like black authors and reading about black authors and talking about like blackness in general. Um, and what made me a little uncomfortable was the fact that it was uh, run by a white professor. Um, and what made it even more uncomfortable was the fact that while we were reading one of the books, um, he said that within a literature context, it's okay for anyone to say the N-word. And he like asked the black students in class what they thought about it, but he wouldn't allow us to actually answer him. And it was like very uncomfortable for all of the black students in class to like experience that because it like he tried to give us space to use our voice but he really just shut us down in the end um and like went with his own decision um luckily like no one in the class actually said the n-word which was like <laughs> like obviously like a good thing but like the fact that a lot of people believe that in a literature context you are allowed to say anything um like especially within a room where you could be offending or harming someone um, is like very problematic and the fact that this professor is still on this campus makes me a little more uncomfortable. Like Spanish faculty, there there's instances where I didn't learn Spanish from like a book or grammar and such but rather I learned it from hearing and speaking and so there was many times where I was like oh well your Spanish is wrong. The only Spanish is like very academically charged or like the Spain Spanish is seen as like the ideal. And so having to deal with that and had many of its like repercussions. So 
Yeah. You definitely see a lot of things. You realize and catch some of the microaggressions um, as like time progresses, and it's a very, it's a very like, like prevalent part in just being a brown person on a campus. This past term, fall term. I had a class where we were reading plays written by women, and it was a wonderful selection of plays. Um, I believe that I was the only brown person in the room, um, but I could be wrong. Um, we were reading this play, and a scene, be a scene pops up in which a black character is saying the N-word, right? And there's a white girl reading. Um, and we had this whole conversation at the beginning of the term talking about how, you know, we understand who's in the room and who's like representing and we just have to come from a place of intentionality and understand, you know, how to have these conversations of who gets to say what before it's before it happens, right? And so I'm kind of like not paying attention. I'm already having like a horrible day. Um, and I'm sitting there and I I finally like realize that this word is coming up and so I'm like okay I wonder if anyone's gonna say something about it or if it's gonna have to be me um, and this girl who's sitting right next to me uh, looks up for a second and then whispers right while she's reading out loud no one moves no one flinches no one says anything I just got up and I left <laughs> because in that moment, as ready as I have been to be able to interject and be able to say, well, you know, we need to talk about who's in the room. I did, did that already weeks ago, right? And you would think that we had already come to an understanding and you would think that in that moment I'd be seen by my faculty member who's in the room, by my peers, and understood that this could make me very uncomfortable and it could be very triggering for me. And it's not my responsibility to have to say, hey, we should talk about this, right? And so I get up, I leave, um, I go talk to a friend of mine. She like calms me down. I end up going back to class. Um, it's silent. No one looks at, no one's talking about it. Apparently there was like a discussion had, but I was embarrassed, I don't know. But after class, the faculty member, who's also my advisor, and I adore her, um, it was just so hard to, to have to kind of like plead my case to her in a certain way and like get her to understand how harmful that was. Because I didn't really want to talk about it. I didn't really want to think about it. I kind of just wanted to move on with my day because I didn't want to have to bear the weight of that.